Hi guys, welcome to the second in my unethical psychology series. Animal experimentation in psychology does not come more cruel than this. Harlow's monkeys. Um, it was an experiment that was conducted by Harry Harlow and his team in 1958. The idea was that they wanted to explore how newborn baby rhesus monkeys would behave, would adapt without their mother. What would happen? How would this experiment affect them physically, psychologically, and um, and so on? The idea, and this is this is uh, one poor little monkey clinging on to a cloth imitation of his mother. Little rhesus monkeys are highly dependent on their mothers, both for nutrition, for support, for a whole range of, uh, of, of physical needs, but also, as it turns out, um, a wide range of psychological needs as well. What they were testing was what has become known in psychology as attachment theory. Like it says here, the behavioural theory of attachment would suggest an infant would form an attachment with a carer that provides food. Um, what was particularly interesting about, well, from a, from a psychological point of view, what was interesting about Harlow's experiment, I mean, it seems so obvious now, but Harlow's monkeys, when they were given the option of one of these mothers that was able to provide food, so through a bottle, but didn't have the support, didn't have the fur and the kind of soft feeling that his, his natural mother would. They didn't want that one. They didn't want the mother that was hard and horrible but provided food. They wanted the cloth mother. Therefore, Harlow concluded that it was the mother the mother that provided the comfort. I mean, it seems so obvious now. They did several incantations of this type of experimentation, all of them incredibly cruel. For example, infant monkeys were reading complete isolation. I mean, that is just ho horrific, complete isolation. Um, the results being that the monkeys are engaged in bizarre behavior. Um, unlike Seligman's dogs, which was the first in this series, linked that way somewhere. There's video evidence of this. Um, films were taken of these various different experiments with these poor little rhesus monkeys. So I'm going to play you this clip. Um, it, is, it is quite horrible. But I'm going to play you anyway. This monkey is an orphan, separated from his mother since the day of his birth. Literally, his life hangs by a thread, a soft cheesecloth pad that is his only companion, his only comfort. Once a day, the pad is removed for cleaning. This is the laboratory of psychologist Harry Harlow. Troubled, distressed, permanently deprived. He is studying monkeys to better understand human relationships. He may die for want of love. Harlow is studying love because he believes it makes an indelible impact on a young life. The relationship between a mother and her child, what Harlow calls our earliest social environment, could hold the key to explaining behavior throughout life. Harlow designs a set of ingenious experiments. He raises a baby monkey, allowing it to choose between two surrogate mothers, a wire mother that feeds it, and a cloth mother that doesn't. A cloth mother that Harlow thinks might provide something else. Comfort and love. Here's baby 106. Weaned on a wire mother. He's going to the wire mother. But this infant quickly runs to the cloth mother where he will stay for the next 18 hours, cuddling. In Harlow's mind, choosing nurturing over sustenance. In a 
another experiment, Harlow creates a fearful situation. Whom does the infant turn to now? Let's find out what his reaction to his mother are when we frighten him. something about the experience of comfort and love, even more than food, that seems crucial to all these monkeys. But what happens when the infant is raised alone, without any mother at all, wire or cloth? In this situation, the orphan monkey stays alone. He won't even go to the cloth mother when frightened, but retreats into his own world. Harlow believes he has shown how want of love can damage an infant for life. And he worries the same is true for people. What comes through loud and clear in Harry Harlow's experiment was that early experience and the environment were crucial to the healthy development of, a, of the infant child. And that in a sense, if you messed up, if the right kind of maternal presence was not there during the critical years, then that infant might grow up to be an adult incapable of forming healthy relationships with other kinds of people. Horrific, yeah. Um, so, of course, of course, looking back, you know, through today's lens, in 1958, that was considered ethical. Um, of course, it wouldn't be today, and it's been heavily, heavily criticised. But like this article says, it, it is argued, it is argued, this is part of the undergraduate syllabus, and um, this will be given as an argument to undergrads as to why these totally unethical experiments were conducted. Um, you know, with the experimenters having seen just just no heart whatsoever. I and mean, that was, you know, a prison of the most horrific standards. Um, but the argument is that this benefits research. This told us things that we didn't know um, about human behavior, about the human psyche, about the effects of deprivation on human children. However, that's not quite true because, unfortunately, um, naturally occurring circumstances, I mean, these weren't engineered in experiments like Harry Harlow's um, were. These were actually naturally occurring conditions on human babies. And this was, um, it's a very rare film, very rare piece of footage on psychogenic diseases in infancy and this was a study if we can call it that um, footage taken um, in 1952 by Rene Spitz so this is a good six years before Harry Harlow's experiments on monkeys and this is emotional deprivation in human children so I'll leave the link to this and to the Simply Psychology article that I, I've shown you before. But these are children. These are children who are, for whatever reason, have been brought up on their own, just given, given food, given the basics of sustenance, but they are raised void of any form of care, really. Um, so infants deprived of their mothers during their first year of life for more than five months deteriorate progressively. They become lethargic, their mortality retarded, their weight and growth arrested. Utterly, utterly horrific situations here. I mean, just look at this little baby. I mean, that, that's akin to that little monkey that was raised in isolation in Harlow's experiment. Utterly horrific. What those 
studies of maternal deprivation in humans show us is that Harry Harlow didn't need to do that experiment on monkeys. He didn't need to engineer that situation on monkeys to understand that the effects of maternal deprivation on human beings is horrific. So looking at it many years later, my question is, was it ever needed in the first place?